the robbers. Schiller, the Kantian, is as much more insensible than Goethe as he is more sens sensual, as much more abstract as he is a plaything of sexuality. Sex as an immediate craving makes everything an object of action and therewith equal. Amalia for the robbers, which is why Louise remains insipid as lemonade. Casanova's women, not for nothing often called by letters instead of names, are hardly distinguishable from one another, as too are the figurines forming complex pyramids to the strain of de Sade's mechanical organ. Something of the sexual crudity, this inability to make distinctions, animates the great speculative systems of idealism, defying all the imperatives and yoking German mind to German barbarism. Peasant greed, only with difficulty held in check by the threats of priests, asserts in metaphysics its autonomous right to reduce everything in its path as unceremoniously to its basic essence, as do soldiers the women of a captured town. The pure, unreflective act is violation projected on the starry sky above. But in the long, contemplative look that fully discloses people and things, the urge towards the object is always deflected reflected. Contemplation without violence, the source of all the joy of truth, presupposes that he who contemplates does not absorb the object into himself, a distanced nearness. Only because Tasso, whom psychoanalysts would call a destructive character, is afraid of the princess and falls a civilized victim to the impossibility of immediate contact, can Adelheid, Clarkin, and Gretchen speak the limpid, unforced language that makes of them an image of a pristine world. The sense of life radiated by Goeth's women was bought with withdrawal, evasion, and there is more in this than mere resignation before the victorious order. The absolute opposite, symbolizing the unity of sensuality and abstraction, is Don Juan. When Kierkegaard says that in him sensuality is comprehended as a principle, he touches on the secret of sensuality itself and the fixity of its gaze until self-reflection dawns is, very is the very anonymity, the unhappy generality that is fatefully reproduced in its negative, the unfettered sovereignty of thought.